Hello, I'm Sensei John Small with the Western Mountain Jiu-Jitsu Society, and today I want to talk to you about stances. Uh, I think it's an often neglected part of the practice, and it's such a crucial and fundamental part of, of techniques. Stances really are like the trunk of a tree, and in the same way tree supports, or the trunk supports all of the, the branches of the tree, so the good strong stances support such a wide variety of the techniques that uh, we do. So it's really worth putting effort and energy into, into your stance work. Uh, the strengths of having good stance work uh, are first and foremost mobility. When you have uh, good mobility, that gives you such a, a big advantage over your opponent. It allows you to be able to choose the combat on your terms. It allows you to be able to potentially exploit his weaknesses, uh, specifically getting around uh, to his flank or backside for better positioning. Uh, it allows you to be able to evade attacks as you can more readily move out of the way of them. Uh, if he can't hit you or grab you or uh, whatever he may try to do to you, then uh, you're hard to defeat. Uh, so those are the advantages of, of stance work. Um, one of the principles I want to talk about, uh, which I think isn't often considered, because typically people do a lot of their practice in the dojo or on good, stable ground. Uh, when you're on dry ground, you get a lot of traction. Uh, and so you're really engaging your, the exterior muscles to, to hold the stances. Uh, but what you notice doesn't really get engaged are the in interior muscles here. So it's good sometimes as you get more practiced with your stances to go out and start practicing on more slippery surfaces such as a, a wet grass uh, where your feet are more likely to slide out from under you. That forces you to really really start to engage the, uh, the internal muscles and strengthen those up. Now you have to be careful enough so that you don't injure yourself when you start when you start practicing in that way. You have to be well aware of the risk of things slipping out and you don't want to stretch and pull a groin or something so you really have to if you have to use a stick to stabilize yourself in, in such uh, things then you do that uh, but more you're really looking to try to develop that strength so that you're bracing your legs in a complete isometric contraction uh, I speak of that in my strength and conditioning video essentially it means you're contracting the muscle but the muscle is neither lengthening or, or shortening uh, as you get practiced on that, uh, a little more advanced, move out to ice and start practicing on that. that. That really forces you to brace completely. You have almost no traction, so you're forced to completely brace your legs both ex on the exterior and the, the interior here. Um, and that can bring some other interesting benefits. If you watch uh, Mifune Sensei doing some of his judo demonstrations on YouTube, uh, He's great, he's, he's a little guy and people grab him and pick him up to throw him, but he manages to just kind of keep his legs in those isometric contractions, just, just bounce around and keeps himself braced and lands on his feet. He's really good at that. Uh, so that can be one of the places you can think about working and developing your stances, understanding that you're really looking to brace yourself into them rather than just rely on the, the external forces here. Uh, Working deeper into stances is, is definitely a good practice. Um, I think that a lot of people start to get the mistaken idea as they're learning stances that they want to go as deep as they possibly can. Um, that's, that's great for practice, but when it comes to practical combat application, that's not really how you want your mind to think. Uh, the reason for that is you want to be in what's more of a comfortable place, somewhere short of where your, your limits and your thresholds are, because that gives you room to move, that gives you room to adjust and go deeper if you want. If you're already as deep as you can go, you've only got one direction to go, and that's less deep. Uh, but if you're not as deep as you can go, you can go deeper or less deep. Uh, and that's an advantage. Uh, it allows you to be able to tap into the energy of gravity at your will. Uh, it also that leaves you more protected. When you're stretched out as much as you can be stretched out, suddenly you're vulnerable. If somebody hooks my foot, for example, I've got no room with which to work to try to evade or defend myself. Uh, so in terms of practical combat application, you want to be somewhere short of how deep you can go. 
That way, if my foot does get hooked, I've got some room I can maneuver to to uh, to adjust and defend myself. Uh, that's not to say you never go as deep as you can in a combat situation, but typically that's something that you're more likely to think about transitioning through uh, in the process of getting somewhere else. Um, with that in mind, uh, you know, one of the real advantages, I think, of, of practicing getting your stances deeper and deeper uh, comes in in terms of groundwork. I think a lot of people think of groundwork, and I think in a lot of people's minds that there's such a vast division. There's, there's the stand-up game, and then there's the ground game, and there's a major difference between the two. Uh, I try to think in my own mind as they're as really trying to compress that difference down through deeper and deeper stances so that I ideally come to a point where I have virtually eliminated. I could practically be grappling with somebody on the ground and then be on my feet almost at the same time. And by condensing that difference, uh, you know, I hope to give myself an advantage in this regard. I think that grappling is a real crucial and important skill to develop, especially in today's time. Um, but when it comes to being in a street fight, the ground is not the place you want to be at all. Uh, so, to me, if I'm on the ground, then things have gone wrong. And it's not a place I want to remain. So, I try to put a lot of effort and energy into practicing how to extract myself out of groundwork situations. And that's where being able to really achieve, you know, if you're on your feet, and it doesn't take much. Or if you're on, on the ground, it doesn't take much and you're on your feet. Uh, because you are capable of super deep stances, uh, I think that's only going to serve to give you an advantage. Uh, the stick, I mentioned it in terms of working with slippery grass. It's a really, really good tool for really helping you learn to get those stances stretched out and deepened out. Uh, support yourself as you need to. Get nice and stable. Work to let the, you know, use the stick less once you're in position. Let the legs do the supporting more, if you can. Uh, that's a real good way to, uh, to approach trying to get yourself deeper. The stick is a, just a tool to really help you keep safe and keep you from uh, stretching out or growing too far or something. Um, this is another way to really uh, actually move this out of the way a little more. It's another way to really uh, benefit your stances, just using some weight, some some dumbbells. You don't want to go with things that are too heavy for yourself, but just holding, holding yourself in a stance. You'll find that if you start holding yourself in a stance long enough like this, the weight just starts pulling you deeper and deeper. And uh, that's a good thing. Uh, don't go with something that's too heavy for yourself. These are also great to help move it around when you're you know, just, if you're practicing walking in a Zen Kutsudashi, uh, you can practice pivoting around. 180, 270. Uh, however you may practice, you want to have the weights light enough so that you're, think, think in terms of low intensity, not something that's super heavy and you're struggling with because you're, you're being dynamic with your legs. So you don't want to be, uh, have them on a real heavy exertion. Um, so lighter weights, lower intensity, so that you're able to control it real well. Uh, and your stance work will still benefit significantly uh, from it. <laughs> One other thing I like to use in that regard is this. Personally, I just, uh, same idea, you don't want to get something that's too heavy for yourself. But I like to just get this up onto my shoulders and then again, I can practice my Zen Kutsudashi. This helps me work to really stay up straight with my back. I don't want to be leaning too much. So I can get up straight with my back, walking in my Zen Kutsudashis. Um, nothing says you can't practice a few kicks like this as you go, whatever it is you may want to practice. I love it for Kokutsudashis, shuffling, uh, pivoting around, that kind of thing. And again, pivoting all the pivots. A lot of things you can do. Anyways, I uh, hope you've enjoyed my discussion on deeper stances, and uh, I'll call that good for this evening.
どうもホーガイでございました。Thank you. さよなら。